So welcome everyone. This is session 1.3.B um, of day one of Charles Sturt edX. It's been a fantastic morning this um, so far. I've really enjoyed um, our opening address from Graham and then being in a fantastic session around work integrated learning. But um, I'm, and I'm really looking forward to this session here where we have a number of um, presenters, you know, talking about many things around learning and teaching around authentic spaces for learning. So I'm really looking forward to what we're going to hear today. But I want to start by um, acknowledging that uh, we pay our respects to all First Nations elders, both past, present and emerging across all lands which Charles Sturt University staff and students reside. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of Aboriginal people to country. And I also want to welcome and acknowledge any Aboriginal um, and Torres Strait Islander people and elders who might be joining this meeting today. So um, as I said, we've got a fabulous session coming up. Um, I'll go on to the next screen. You can see that there we've got Kirsty, Rebecca, Kate and Caroline talking about spaces and places for authentic learning. We've got um, a session around interprofessional education um, with Catherine, Louise and Rebecca. Then we've got Lucinda and Leticia talking about a mental health hub um, and, and you know how that was set up and created. And then um, last but not least, we've got Brendan, James and Alison talking about how we can use AI to really um, change the way in, we, in which we think about online uh, medical education uh, obviously within a rural health curriculum. So a fantastic number of sessions coming up um, and we will have some time for Q&A at the end of this session. So I want you as people are talking to put a few questions down or some comments into the chat so that once we stop um, presenting that we can all start to kind of have that conversation. So um, let me start off now by inviting our first speaker. So I've got Kirsty, Rebecca, Kate and um, Caroline, and I will stop sharing my screen so that you can share it. Um, and I think Kate, you're speaking on behalf of the team. So please um, go ahead. No, you're not. Hi, Kashila. Kirsty, I'm oh, speaking. Okay, <laughs> That's there. okay. Kate, I'm so sorry. I put but you on Kate the Kate will chime in later for sure. <laughs> and oh, Caroline wonderful. and Beck. So, you can you can now um kind of go with the show go for that 10 minutes and then excellent. i will give you a one minute warning excellent thank you i'll just share my screen okay hopefully you can see a powerpoint there yes we can yeah good okay so hi i'm kirsty van grinsman i'm an associate lecturer in podiatry and i am representing my team in this presentation today so welcome to spaces and places for authentic learning our team is so grateful to be invited to share our experiences with you today firstly i would like to acknowledge and show my deep respect for all aboriginal and torres strait islander peoples as the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which csu campuses are located where we live work and learn together i especially pay my respects to all first nations elders past present and emerging i'm joining you today from beautiful wiradjuri country in albury I would like to express my wholehearted thanks to First Nations Australians for continuing to show strength in sharing their rich culture, knowledges and perspectives. May we collaboratively continue to actively listen and learn together for collective future benefit. This submission showcases a collaboration between two non-Indigenous podiatry academics, myself and my fellow colleague, Associate Professor Caroline Robinson from the School of Allied Health Exercise and Sports Sciences at Charles Sturt University, along with Wanarua registered nurse, Rebecca Willis, and non-Indigenous podiatry clinical educator, Kate Melville, as part of the committed team at Albury Wodonga Aboriginal Health Service. For the purpose of this presentation, we'll refer to this service as AWAS. We come together forming this collegial collaboration with varying backgrounds and experiences, both personally and professionally, each bringing with us different knowledges and perspectives. We acknowledge that our ideas are continually guided through engagement with the AWAS team, the CS School A team, the Indigenous Board of Studies, and local First Nations elders and community members. Our teams identified it significant issues concerning understanding First Nations health and well-being. The need to provide students with First Nations health experience in an authentic learning environment, 
the importance of building relationships with local First Nations community in line with the concept, nothing about us without us, and helping students understand the meaning of Yindyamurra, going slowly with respect, allowing time to build relationships with First Nations colleagues and clients. On a more personal level, I had sensed a feeling of understandable apprehension among some of my colleagues to engage in this area of teaching, but fear of doing or saying the wrong thing, which can at times act as a barrier to facilitating meaningful learning experiences for students learning culturally responsive practice. Through community consultation to ensure cultural sensitivity, prioritization of First Nations voices and information sovereignty by utilization of a place-based pedagogical framework, an interactive learning experience for third year podiatry students studying POD 318, Podiatry for Chronic Disease Management was created. All learning content and assessments were carefully constructed and scaffolded in consultation and partnership with Beck and Kate from AWARS. The students initially grounded their learning in a face-to-face -face class on the Albury campus, considering their individual standpoints and positionings. Prior learning about cultural safety was reviewed and evaluation of the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health Worker Association Cultural Safety Framework took place. This class provided important preparation for an on-site visit to AWAS, where students participated in a yarning circle with First Nations health practitioners and a tour of the Aboriginal Medical Service. A post-visit online session enabled time for a debrief on the AWAS experience as preparation for the related assessment task, a 300-word written reflection, and the creation of an A4-size health educational infographic. Rebecca provided valuable feedback to students as their assessment marker, drawing on her First Nations perspectives of health and well-being and recognising their allyship in this space. The result of this community collaboration is the creation of an authentic blended learning experience that respects First Nations ways of knowing, being and doing. Students' qualitative feedback acknowledged the value of engagement with AWAS. One student commented in the subject experience survey that the assessments were fun and engaging, and as a student, they really wanted to complete them. Chloe Fisher, a third year podiatry student, provided some audio feedback of her experience. Visiting the Aubrey Wodonga Aboriginal Health Service within our chronic disease management subject was an amazing experience to be a part of as a student. The multidisciplinary clinic really made me appreciate what an amazing service this is for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, and we saw the high quality service that AWAS is providing for chronic disease and its comorbidities. We were able to immerse ourselves into what it was like being a health practitioner at AWAS and feel the importance of integrating Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture within care for the patients. Overall, I think this experience cemented to us as students how important the part that culture and identity plays in management of chronic disease and how this leads to improved health outcomes. This was rewarding for everyone involved. The staff can agree when I say this experience highlighted the empowering impact of learning together and creating meaningful engagement with students, extending our own understandings of culturally responsive practice. Kate and Beck further shared their thoughts. One of the things about working in First Nations Health is just the design of the buildings and how things are all under one roof. And for the students to come out and see that and see how everyone works in together, I think was a really big insight for them. Because it is different from mainstream and it needs mm. to be different from mainstream. They can understand how they are unless they see them. They need that visual understanding. They need to actually be part of that and immersed into that rather than just read it on paper needs to be something that they can actually come along and, and join in with and yes. see it and it's organic then mm. it feels real they've all heard from all of us working in different areas and what a way of collaborating and you get a lot further when you do that sort of stuff yeah absolutely i've been really impressed with the progression that people have learned through these assessments through this content like they have really shown that their standpoint from one assessment to the next they're really engaged with it. They really want to make a difference and they're actually identifying their own discourses and their privileges that they've had their whole life and being able to identify that with mob and saying, oh, you know, I feel really bad about that, but this is what I can do in my profession to actually make a difference. And I think that's what the key is here. We're looking at 
that next generation of health professionals and trying to support them to be able to be more culturally responsive to mobs so that mob get better health outcomes. Purposeful design, including online, on-campus and community environments, increases student engagement, producing improved learning outcomes, thus emphasising the importance of working collaboratively to create spaces and places for authentic learning. As you listen to the following conversations amongst our team, be mindful of the key principles we recommend when facilitating authentic First Nations learning and teaching experiences. You do find that if you ask a question, you might get an answer to it six months later, but there's a reason everything happens at the, when it needs to. Auntie Edna says that to me all the time. It needs to come from community. If you've got an idea, that's great but you need to be respectful and you need to ask if this is something that fits with community. And then you need to be able to actually tailor it based on what communities say. It's not a tokenistic approach. It's about sitting with community, finding out what that community in particular needs, because we're all different across Australia. There's so many different communities and mobs that, you know, have different needs. That needs to be authentic. You need to be sitting with mob and finding out what it is and then working with that. And it takes time. It's not something that's going to happen within a couple of weeks. It takes years. If you want to do it properly, it's got to be done over a length of time and building those relationships. And those relationships need to then stay. You can't just build them up, do a program, and then off you go. It, it, you really need to become a part of that community at the end of the day. You won't ever be mob, but you'll be an ally. Yeah. And allies are trusted and respected people as part of community. It needs to be, obviously, to with people that are respected. You know, we need to respect our elders and their decisions as well. Yeah. It is very much a community-driven thing. It's not just the four of us, but there is a journey and a process. And, yeah. you know, the reason it works here is because this is a comfortable space and the students are coming into the patient's comfortable space. Just this change that you've made is making a difference to a community. One minute to go, Kirsty. Thanks, Kashila. Oh, perfect. We hope you're inspired to develop collaborative partnerships to purposefully design and create meaningful and authentic learning for your students. Here are some further readings you will find useful when planning to collaborate and facilitate Indigenous engagement for your subjects. We invite you to ask our team questions in the Q&A time after the following presentations. We're always happy for a chat. Thank you. Wonderful work, Kirsty and colleagues. I um, loved hearing the students' voices. That was the best experience I've had. You know, we've seen lots of quotes on um, our screens, but getting to hear the students and the the, bird, the lovely birds in the background, it was amazing. So well done to you. I love that. That was Thank a great you. start to this session. So well done. Um, so now I invite um, colleagues Catherine, Louise and Rebecca um, to present on their work around uh, interprofessional education for rural health students. There we go. Fantastic. Thank you, Catherine. Hi, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, my name is Catherine and I'll be presenting today with my colleague, Rebecca. We would also like to acknowledge our colleague, Louise French, who had equal contribution in creating this presentation. And we also acknowledge our rural health education team who do facilitate this professional education to the students. Um, so we acknowledge the Wiradjuri, Gunnamore, Gundagara and Biripai peoples of Australia, who are the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which our campuses are located and pay respect to their elders, both past and present. We also extend that respect to other Indigenous Australians who are present or listening to this recording afterwards. Um, we take great um appreciation in being able to live and learn on this these countries so we wanted to acknowledge that ourselves as well. In case anyone present isn't aware so three rivers where we work um, our aim is to support the recruitment and retention of rural health professionals to improve the health of rural communities. This involves working with students throughout their studies health students um, and through work integrated learning. Our presentation will explore our rural health education teams um, facilitation and creation of a hybrid learning environment that connects health students who um, are really geographically spread whilst on that work integrated learning and we will also share an evaluation um, and the outcomes to date. Thanks Beck. Thanks Kat. 
Thank you. So before we talk about our student Zoom meetings that our team at Three Rivers facilitated, um, it's important or helpful to consider why interprofessional education and, and what underpinned uh, the changes that we made to the meetings that were existing. Uh, so interprofessional education is an important model of, of learning for students. Um, it fosters teamwork and collaboration, develops knowledge of other health professions role and scope of practice. We know it improves patient care and outcomes. IPE can be incorporated into uh, work integrated learning to create a discussion space for student learning. Students can grow their ideas and knowledge based on their own experiences, but also those of others. However, despite the importance of IPE, it can be challenging to facilitate when students are geographically spread across rural placement locations. And this is certainly the case for uh, the group of students that we work with at Three Rivers who are undertaking will uh, across a, a very large geographical footprint. So our solution was to incorporate IPE into our existing stu student Zoom meetings, uh, which we'll talk about now. Thanks, Kat. Uh, so, so what are the student Zoom meetings? How have they evolved? And uh, how and why did we adapt the meetings to become more of a hybrid model, incorporating both meaningful connection for students on work integrated learning, as well as an opportunity for uh, interprofessional education. So if we just cast our minds back to, it seems a long time ago now, um, but we all remember this time, back to 2020, um, our, when uh, a lot of our students, we started um, increasing our engagement with students online. Uh, due to the pandemic. Um, so we made a decision, our Three Rivers Rural Health Education team, to start uh, facilitating fortnightly student Zoom meetings. So the meetings were designed for those students that were um, on uh, still um, or were able to go on work integrated learning experiences. And the idea was that we would provide uh, pastoral support and connection for students in rural areas. So we continued along the way, uh, holding these meetings fortnightly, engaging students, encouraging students to come and join us and, and receive this support and, and interact with other students. Uh, but we started to reflect on uh, earlier this year in 2023, um, as our numbers increased in the meetings um, and we had students that were uh, attending more than once. Uh, this prompted us to review how we actually engage with the students each fortnight and we started to ponder, you know, could we uh, create or use this platform for more meaningful connection? And also, is this presenting a unique opportunity for uh, interprofessional learning? You know, we've got a group of health profession students together uh, from a range of different disciplines and, and that's a wonderful opportunity to, uh, I guess, um, use that use that time to not only not only for pastoral support but also for education too so halfway through this year uh, our team uh, developed a suite of education topics uh, and um, the idea was that we would facilitate these online for students uh, and we have been doing this and uh, these topics have included boundaries, self-care, critical thinking, resilience, and also cultural awareness and responsiveness. Uh, and we've actually had Auntie Jane, um, uh, one of our First Nations elders come and present to the students as well. So where we're at currently, the 30 minute education topics are delivered on rotation each fortnight. Uh, and the plan is for this to um, for us to continue to rotate these topics. As students collaborate in this environment, we aim to create opportunities for deep learning um, and and continue to review how these meetings run into 2024. Thanks, Kat. Uh, the literature on collaborative and peer assisted learning emphasizes the value of peers in providing a supportive learning environment where students feel safe uh, to express their fears. And uh, for any of us and many of us that have worked with students uh, undertaking work integrated learning, we know there are a lot of fears. 
it also enables students to co-construct knowledge that is relevant to the context. So now that we have incorporated interprofessional education into our student Zoom meetings, we, we are providing opportunities for peer learning and collaborative learning in addition to the existing informal supervision and support as displayed on the slide you're now looking at. Collaborative learning focuses on preparing learners for the future workplace by encouraging meaningful group interaction. And we believe uh, this is how, um, this is what we can achieve by having the group of health profession students together, not only uh, talking about education, uh, but or, or learning from the facilitators um, in our team, but also having the opportunity to then discuss these themes together in the, in the session. So in our student Zoom meetings, uh, we're, we're bringing together the students, they meet, exchange ideas, contribute opinions and receive supports, support from their peers and facilitators. And we believe our rural health education team um, who facilitate the meetings model uh, into professional education and learning as well as we are a team of um, professionals uh, across a number of different disciplines. So we too are learning uh, from and with each other. The IPE component of the student Zoom meeting leads to rich discussion amongst the students and uh, this is, is built on by the educators and who, who facilitate the meetings. Thanks, Kat, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Um, as we mentioned, we did do some, evaluative, some evaluation in these. Um, the brief evaluation was embedded via QR code at the end of each meeting. Um, this was for students to rate the meeting as an opportunity for learning and to connect with others. Um, as you can see, there, there were only three questions we asked, one being how beneficial was this activity for connection, to what extent was the professional development session relevant to your learning, and would you recommend it to other students? So the graph there represents seven meetings we've had at the end of this year with 54 participants and 26 having responded to the evaluation. Um, so that's roughly about 48%. Um, so the limitations, however, we wanted to mention were that we did have a small sample size as the trial is in its infancy. Like I said, we've only had seven meetings um, and the evaluation itself was voluntary. We put it at the end of each meeting but and heavily encouraged it, but we didn't make it mandatory. Um, and another thing to mention was we didn't have any evaluation data of the meetings prior to the implementation of this education for any sort of comparison, um, which would have been very handy to look at, but we're not sure of if these scores are any higher or lower um, to what it was before the education was implemented. And it was just that pastoral support and connection. One minute to go, Catherine. Yeah, thank you. Um, so our plan for in the future is just to continue to explore other topics to cover. Um, and considering ways that we can improve that student experience. And as Beck said, this trial will be reviewed in 2024. We have a little quote there from Ainsley, a third year OT student, who said that the additional learning around boundaries, self-care, et cetera, were very helpful. And it was a great way to connect with other students. Really quickly, some take home messages we found in doing this was ensuring that the topics were really relevant to a student's transition to rural practice, um, utilising the strengths of your colleagues, not siloing yourself. We are a very interprofessional team ourselves um, with podiatrists, uh, OT, social workers, et cetera, and we found that really beneficial to then give interprofessional education. Um, Recognise learner diversity, engage with interactive teaching tools uh, such as Slido and the whiteboard, not just the Zoom meetings, using those tools and evaluate what you're providing and be flexible for that change um, as we've been, as we've gone along, we've responded to what the students have said and integrated it. Um, and yeah, there's some references and readings and our three rivers information. If anyone wants to visit our site, we have a lot of support for clinicians and students.
Wonderful, Catherine, okay. Rebecca, that is amazing. Congratulations once again to the Three Rivers um, uh, team. Um, I think your presentation just reminded me about the power of learning with, from and about each other. And not just for students, but for us as staff, exactly what we're doing at CSEDX. So I hope you enjoy the learning experience over the next three days. Um, so now I'm going to invite um, colleagues Lucinda and Leticia, I hope I'm saying your name right, um, to present on the creation of an hybrid multidisciplinary mental health hub. Hello. Thanks for so much for having us. Um, is that all good to go that, there? That looks great, Lucinda. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so um, my colleague and myself, um, Letitia and I, we're going to talk about the creation of a rural mental health education hub. Um, we are also from the Three Rivers um, Department of Rural Health. So thanks, um, Kat, for uh, the introduction there. Um, and so, yeah, um, my role is the um, mental health project coordinator and Letitia um, is our rural mental health academic advisor. So um, we'll just have a yeah, acknowledgement of country. Um, and so we would like to pay our respects to all First Nations elders, both past and present uh, from the lands where Charles Sturt University students reside. Uh, in particular, we acknowledge the Wiradjuri, Gunnawal, Gundagara, Virapai peoples of Australia, who are the traditional custodians of the land where um, Charles Sturt University and the um, Three Rivers uh, footprint um, campuses are located. So um, in 2022, uh, Three Rivers was awarded funding from the Department of Health and Aging to design, develop and trial a multidisciplinary hybrid mental health education hub. Um, this came out of a particular recommendation, recommendation 11 um, from the report there. And that was the committee recommends that the Australian government leverage the existing Australian Rural Health Education Network by providing funding for clinical placements in regional, rural and remote university clinics and using these clinics to trial multidisciplinary hybrid mental health hubs that integrate digital and face-to-face -face services. Um, so quite broad. <laughs> um, this has come off the back of, as we know, a clear mental health, suicidality, social and emotional wellbeing crisis that currently exists in Australia. And out of the um, Murrumbidgee Primary Health Network Needs Assessment, um, what they found and reported is that residents in the Murrumbidgee area reported a high level of psychological distress, reduced digital health literacy, longer wait times and high rates of suicide in males compared to others residing in New South Wales and Australia. And as we know, there are further challenges that exist in rural and regional communities due to existing workforce shortages and inadequate training. Um, so that's kind of where um, what this uh, project came out of. Um, our aim with this project initially, um, you know, we looked at a variety of different um, ideas for a hub. Uh, one of those was a, a service delivery type model. Um, so what we've done, and, and Letitia will talk about this in the next sort of slides of um, how we've come to our current project, um, but we did quite a lot of um, stakeholder engagement to figure out exactly um, what is needed and how we can, um, you know, be put to good use here. So uh, our aim uh, is to support students during their rural mental health placements in the Three Rivers footprint through the development of a variety of educational enhancement resources. So um, we talked to uh, students um, on placements, we talked to new graduate nurses, OTs, social works and paramedics, um, we talked to academics and um, industry professionals as well. And what came out of that is that um, there is a severe theory to practice gap um, in these students. Um, and hence why we've decided to go with an education enhancement uh, digital platform. So what was found um, in particular is that students are often unprepared for mental health placements. Students often undervalue mental health drug and alcohol placements and therefore they're not engaged in placements. Students often feel unsupported uh, if they do want to pursue a career in mental health, drug and alcohol, and they're often deterred away from mental health careers. This is um, probably most commonly seen in the um, nursing new graduates where um, the quite often told that perhaps um, they'll lose those uh, clinical skills if they go into a, um, 
a new graduate um, program into mental health directly out of university and that there is still significant stigma associated with mental health drug and alcohol, cons- med- mental health drug and alcohol consumers and careers um, among students as well. So uh, what we um, ultimately aim to do with this is to um, bring together the needs of the rural community, um, support existing digital and face-to-face services in our region, and then also link students with existing mental health and wellbeing resources, because we know that um, their mental health is um, just as important and we need to support them um, whilst on rural mental health placements. Uh, Thanks, Tish. Thanks, Lucy. Look, I'll just apologise for my lack of correct background, so hopefully that's not too distracting. Um, so just as just picking up from what Lucy was saying, so what we've done this year basically is, um, first of all, um, get a good idea of where our current mental health placements are across our region and what disciplines and where they're, so where they're going and who they are and how long those placements are. Um, and then explore some of that the mental health, drug and alcohol um, data that we um, that Lucy touched on before, and um, mostly in that second stage is really trying to locate who our key partners are going to be. Um, so we do have a project consultation group um, that meets semi regularly to, um, which includes. Um, both the Western LHD partners and um, Murrumbidgee LHD and both respective PHNs. Um, in addition to that, um, students that we have access to that have, that are on mental health placements within that footprint, um, academics, professional staff, anyone that will talk to us. So if there's people that are listening, we would love to hear from you. <laughs> um, and um, so I guess, yeah, we've we've sort of been doing the background. Um, we've uh, created that um, uh, consultation group. Um, we've been starting to listen. We've really just been sitting and listening and taking the time to not develop something that's um, tokenistic, not develop anything that's um, replicating. Um, we want something that's going to be able to be kept, um, you know, sustainable as possible um, and that's actually going to have a benefit to um, to students um, so that's sort of our our background is uh, um, and and I guess that's where we've we've been driven at this point is to develop um, an educational enhancement um, so um, and that so I guess, yeah, on to the next slide. So what that's looking like at the moment, so our first um, phase is to, as Lucy suggested, is um, a digital platform. So that will sit within our um, website um, and basically provide a visual for everyone to, if they're um, going on a mental health placement um, or during their placement or after placement, some resources and some guidance on um, what's appropriate information and where they might go to from there. So if we're talking pre-placement, um, it's about bringing together all the current resources. So we're not creating anything new at this point. We're just um, going to give them some direction around, you know, where to go for mental health first aid training, suicide prevention training, um, providing internal links um, to how they can look after themselves. So there is a plethora of information out there. Um, you know, if you if you go and Google like all the different service, all the different um, platforms um, of digital um, courses or um, information um, from Black Dog or EM Prac or you know, there's there's a there's a billion. Um, so we're just trying to condense that to keep. Um, it contained and to what we, um, you know, to, to um, yeah, sort of summarise everything for them. Um, and then during placement, I think there's a, there's a good opportunity there to develop some really structured um, uh, resources so that we can support their reflection and their learning um, during placement and then also after placement. So um, that's our initial um, goal, short-term goal is is to provide that um, web space um, and to evaluate that and see what the the outcomes, the feedback and where to from there might look like um, in the longer term. 
having um, it may develop into into other um, uh, other things, I suppose. One minute to um, go, Letitia. Yeah, One. so um, we we see that this potentially has um, uh, you know a um, a lot of uh, um, potential um, that it's going to encourage that multidisciplinary understanding place of connection for mental health. So at the moment, we're quite still discipline focused and each discipline will have their resources and structures around mental health placements and, and um, pathways. So this is hoping just to bridge all of that. Hopefully that makes sense. And if, like I said, if anyone has um, any reflections or any questions, Lucy and I are very um, open to um, having a discussion. I'm in Aubrey, Lucy's in Wagga campus. Wonderful. Thank you so much, both of you, Lucinda and Letitia. That was a fantastic presentation. Again, well done to the Three Rivers team. I didn't realize when I was putting the program together that was this was a, a showcase for Three Rivers, but it's fantastic, you know, and, and great to hear for us. Sometimes, you know, we're so in our own disciplines, we're, we're busy doing our work, and this is a fantastic opportunity just to hear about the breadth and diversity of what's going on here at Charles Sturt. So I'm really um, happy to have this conversation and hear from all of you. Um, so next we have uh, our presenters from the Rural um, Health School, but I, I don't know if James or, um, I think James, Brendan or Alison from the School of Rural Medicine, are you here? We may, they may not be here. I've been busily checking the, checking the list. So, Brendan Cantwell, James Scribble, Alison Ritchie, are you around? No, unfortunately not. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but they're not here, which means we actually get a little bit of extra time for discussion, which I think is also a fantastic thing. Of course, we miss hearing from our colleagues from the um, School of Rural Medicine, but I think we have had three fantastic presentations. So we have so much to, I guess, think about and, and talk about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen now and kind of get us into that question and answer phase. And if within 10 minutes to go, we get um, one of that team from the School of Rural Health uh, or Medicine joining us, then we'll give them a chance to present their work. So how about we shift things up a little bit, have this conversation, and then I'll keep an eye on people as they enter the room. So I'm going to open it up to the floor for now. Um, what, what's front of mind for you? Sh share with me as you've been listening to these presentations. Like I said, um, there was something really powerful about peer learning, learning with from about each other for students and for staff, I would add, you know, Kirsty um, and colleagues, you, it was just amazing to hear the work that you're doing in supporting our students to really think about their positionality and to think about their place and space and you know how they kind of engage with that in a respectful way and of course Lucinda and Letitia you know a, a really important reminder I guess about how we can really step outside our disciplinary silos and and put this concept of mental health well-being first and and kind of um look to support our students in different ways about that and I, I really liked your kind of roadmap that you're um, creating for your students around what you do pre during and post placement so I'm going to open it up to the floor um I know there's some questions coming through and I'm going to call people out so I think Kate can I um, get you to perhaps talk to that question I was just wondering about the phone signal with the online catch-ups and whether or not that affected the student's ability to dial in because um, I think the phone signal is rubbish <laughs> so a lot of the, in a lot of places. I was just wondering about that. Hi, Kate. I think you said that's a question for Kat and yeah, I, I think. I think so. <laughs> um, We've held the student Zoom meetings, uh, the meetings via Zoom, student Zoom meetings, um, and uh, typically we haven't actually experienced a lot of issues. Um, at times we find a lot of the students are out on placement or work integrated learning um, in pairs uh, and they are sitting in the uh, sites that they're undertaking um, 
their placements in and um, yeah look we, we we do have times where it will cut in and out but um, we I think we've had a pretty good run overall um, yeah I'd I don't know Kat would you agree yeah I'd yeah. agree like it might cut out from time to time I mean ours does from time to time to be honest yeah. um, but mostly it's pretty good because they're set up at the offices they're located in I'm I haven't heard from anyone that's tried to get in and not been able to. Um, that might be something we don't hear from, um, yeah. but otherwise it's been pretty good. I think the other thing too, Kate, is that uh, with all of the host sites that we have students um, uh, go out to, uh, you know, as part of our preparation and planning for that uh that placement we do um, insist that they have uh, a reasonably reliable connection so that's um, because a lot of the students that we're meeting with are are undertaking service learning placements Uh, so they're doing project work so having reliable internet is is a a must for the project work that they're doing really so um, we do check in on those things at the host sites before they go wonderful thank you Rebecca um any any other questions I don't want to put my um chat up here because I think it will show on the screen although you can all see that so uh, uh, Mark Mark why don't you um speak to your question or your your thought about um, what you were observing and uh, Caroline then I'll come back to you as well thanks Kishila i uh, just listen to you when we talked about some of the uh, stigmas about going into mental health drug and alcohol probably less about what those stigmas are and probably more about what are the ways of perhaps um, combating or or reducing them. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Mark. That's a great question. Um, So when we um, were talking to students um, and we did um, talk to um, students who, you know, we had some nursing and paramedicine and social work students in um, Like Mind, a um, um, community um, mental health placement. And um, the a lot of stigma that they sort of had, um, and, and they were quite young to these students as well, like a lot of them had just come out of school straight into uni. Um, and they still had the... Um, you know, that classic, um, you know, I'm scared to say the wrong thing and, um, you know, that, um, you know, you've got the the psychosis, you know, raging, um, you know, presentation of um, a consumer with um, a mental health illness. Um, and so what we found sort of before that placement and after that placement is even getting them in and involved in an environment that's not that classic, you know, acute mental health sector where they were able to really, you know, observe um, and practice and just have a bit more of awareness. Um, they they really took another approach and they're really able to, um, you know, see that um, most a majority of um, individuals with living and lived mental health experience in the community are not the, you know, what they see like still on um, television and movies. <laughs> um, so uh, what we'd like to do with this, um, you know, having the pre-placement during placement and post-placement resources um, is to sort of guide them through that and um, and hopefully with like an increase in awareness and, um, you know, attitudes and things, um, which we'll, we'll evaluate as well. Um, hopefully we'd like to see, um, you know, a, a decrease in uh, stigma in not just um, in working in mental health as well, especially in a rural area, because that is um, quite an issue that we see, but just also in their in their everyday lives as well. So yeah, hopefully that answered your question. Excellent, thank you. Great work and good Wonderful. luck. Wonderful, thank you so much, Lucinda. Absolutely important work. Caroline, over to you, please. Um, thanks, Gashilla. Um, Thanks everybody, great presentations, but I would just want to ask a question of Catherine, Louise and Rebecca. And I'm just interested to understand what proportion of our allied health students do you think you are um, engaging with through this IPE experience? And is there an opportunity to extend it out? Because my understanding is these are students that have a placement sort of organised through Three Rivers. And obviously a lot of our students have placements that are organised differently. So... Probably how scalable is the initiative? Thank you. So initially, um, and it still is, 
these student Zoom meetings were just aimed at students on a health placement. It wasn't just for our Three Rivers service learning placements, and it still is that way. Um, I do just think that we, having already had a lot to do with those students that are on the service learning placements, that made it easier for the, to reach them and to advertise and bring them in to it that way. Um, but we were still trying to, we send out welcome emails to every student going on a rural placement, our footprint that advertises these student Zoom meetings. We send it out to supervisors and everything to try and get that um, awareness out there. But yeah, I would say um, we do get a lot of the attendees being um, those service learning placements. I'm mm. not sure if you would add to that, Ben. Um, no, I, I would agree. Um, and because uh, we do uh, also uh, encourage the students on service learning placements and often schedule, put it into their schedules, you know, to come and join us, uh, we do predominantly have those students. But we, having said that, we've had students from just doing traditional placements mm -hmm. as yeah, well. Yeah. And there's, it's very much... Um, you know, we've advertised it as a, you know, all welcome, all mm. students uh, undertaking work integrated learning are welcome to join us and join the discussion. And um, and that's how we've always run it. Um, it's just that we have gone from having a in, more informal sort of model um, uh, to incorporating that IPE now too. Mm. I just sorry. I just wondered from a school perspective whether we could, for all of our workplace learning subjects, that somehow we could more formalise it more. Because I'm I wasn't even aware that this was happening. So I'm just interested to understand how many people are in terms of staff, how many people are aware of it, and especially if they convene a workplace learning subject. So I think perhaps maybe we can continue the conversation about how we maybe put it into subject outlines or something. I don't know what would be appropriate. And that's the beauty about CSEDX. We get to find out what we are each doing in our own spaces and places of teaching. And I think that's, and hopefully if this sparks an ongoing conversation between yourself, Caroline and others, you know, this is this is the beauty of CSEDX. So um, please have those conversations, keep chatting, keep talking, keep thinking about how we can collaborate. Um, you know, I see some amazing opportunities for cross kind of university collaboration as well. So make some notes about the people you need to reach out to and, and have a chat with after this session. Um, if I can, um, so I don't know if there's anything else on the chat there. It doesn't appear to be, but if I can take the chair's prerogative and perhaps ask Kirsty um, and her team. So Kirsty, there was a lot of um, comments in the chat about people who were very impressed with, you know, hearing, actually hearing your students speak. And so I wonder whether I could ask you about whether the collection of those kind of audio snippets was that is that something that you get students to do and create those artifacts as part of their learning experience or did do you do that as did you just do that as part of your presentation of what they've done I was just very curious because it's fantastic to have access to that so I wonder whether Kirsty could reply yeah. and help us understand <laughs> sure Kashila that you know what you just saying that sparks me thinking oh gosh I should get the students to actually talk to this no the, ass the assessment for this task was purely just a written reflection and then the design and creation of a health educational infographic but I yeah went and recorded that you know they got the student to record her um, viewpoint on it I knew she was really enthusiastic she told me throughout the session how much she was enjoying the learning so I kind of called upon her and said hey you know do you think you can record something down about what, what you thought about it all so I think it's a great way to capture it it's really good and even um, capturing Beck and Kate's voice for the purpose of um, you know a, a group presentation to be able to keep it within the, the time frame but also get all the key messages across there was a lot of snipping and trimming of, to get exactly the right things and Kate and Beck did a beautiful job of of um, providing some excellent feedback and some tips and, and things around principles of how we can apply this type of thing in teaching but it really just makes it a bit more engaging as well I think um, yeah too too often we're just writing things down and I like yeah there's all different learners in our room here today so you know uh, we, 
people might like to listen or they might like to look or um, read. Not everyone prefers to read. I think in the last session we were talking about, I think Caroline, you mentioned talking about, um, you know, students reading at different paces and, and that's, you know, staff, we're like that too. So, um, you know, you might put a slide up and, and not everyone get a chance to read what's up there. So why not provide something different that's engaging and and people were very willing to talk. I must say yeah. that whenever mm -hmm. I asked, um, Kate and Beck, of course, you know, they spoke for like 20 minutes and I had to cut it down. But even even approaching the student, she was quite happy to do that. I, I guess because it's pre-recorded, they, they can rehearse it and write whatever they want down and kind of do it in a way that they feel is, you know, meets meets what they want to do. So. Yeah. Wonderful. Glad Thank you, you Kirsty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think you make an important point around how we can really think about how we do assessment. I think that was Graham's provocation to us this morning, you know, why do we assess, but then also how do we assess? And I think there are some things that we can be really thinking about in the ways um, of the diversity of ways in which we assess and the diversity of the forms of expression of our learning, I guess, oh, is absolutely. what you've really um, nailed it. So thank you for um, inspiring us all this morning. That's um, okay. I think it would be quite authentic to just get a student to talk to what they do. It's a bit like an interactive oral assessment, isn't it? And I've had experience with that in that subject as well. We actually do an interactive oral regarding some other content later in the subject. But um you know, talking, a lot of students like to talk to what they've learned and it just allows you to dive deeper. I think Marissa always talks about that. So, um, yeah, dive deeper and find out exactly what they know. Sometimes you, you read an essay and you go, hang on, like there's more. What else? What else? And you can just ask them in the interactive oral. So, cool. Wonderful. So I'm actually um, looking at the time here and I think we should um, – take a slight break five minutes because we've got uh, another session coming up so um unfortunately because we've had hadn't had our fourth group um we've had a little bit more time to talk and that was fantastic but i think let's take a bit of a break and before you go though i have one very important job to do besides keeping the time and besides asking you lots of questions and that is to encourage all of you to give us feedback because the only way we're going to improve this experience for you and the only way that we're going to really kind of understand what's been some of the highlights um, for you about this experience is if you take an opportunity to give us some feedback as a CSEDX organizing committee. So I've put a link in the chat and I believe also there's a... Um, there's that there. I hope you can see that. So there's a QR code for those of you who want to do it on the phone. But please give us some feedback um, and help us to understand what you valued about this experience so that we can keep doing the good work, but also keep improving. But um, I will now close the session so that you have five minutes, grab a cup, a stretch, whatever you need to do. And then we will be reconvening for the um, 2020 two executive deans awards presentation so these were the people who um you know received the um, executive deans awards last year and um, this is about celebrating the people behind um those awards and really understanding what their work is so we look forward to really hearing from them about what they've been up to and some of the sort of highlights um so they'll be sharing that with us next but just um, let's take five minutes and then we'll be able to reconvene when we're ready. So thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your the presentations to our three teams. Went well done, fantastic work. Um, thanks for sharing. And for all of those um, people who've been in this session, who've participated in the conversation, thank you as well. And keep talking. <laughs> keep talking beyond CSEDX, I say. Thank you. And see you soon.